one of the things that I wanted to cover, and wouldn't you know, Kevin, one of our net controllers and very involved uh, to get the, uh, the uh, Dayton thing together, sent me a picture of his RF sampler. And I appreciate that because what I will want to talk about is what's inside. <laughs> Now, don't take this wrong. <laughs> I'm doing this. Uh, we're all going to learn something here, Kevin. You did a great job with all of that. However, we have to talk about what's going on with the leads. You notice all these leads are real long. See that? Well, one of the things that I had on my list to talk about tonight, I want to want to start covering some of these things is what we do when we put things together. What I'm talking about there are things like this. When we do uh, the parts on, uh, well, anywhere, wherever we're going to mount the parts, there's one thing you can do to it right there, but you don't want to do that. The reason is you've got all of that lead link sticking out there and it, it could short somewhere else. You want to get rid of that. And when you go to mount parts on the pine board or anything else, what you want to do is pull that up close. I like to take and double them back so they, they have a little bit more hold when you go to solder them. And uh, that, that's so important to shorten those leads. Then when you go to solder these little boogers, uh, the, they're going to have not only the, the soldering to hold them, but uh, the, we can make good connections with, the, uh, with, the, with that little, there we go. And you also want to learn, we do not paint we do not paint with solder. You hold it on there until both pieces are at the same temperature and solder will then take hold. A lot of times I see you, YouTubes where people paint. They just make it, brush it over and make it look good. No, you don't do that. As you saw there, I held that on there until it flowed. Then you cut that off. And... This is very important, and especially if you're building anything that has any RF components. Oh, buddy, that's not good at all because you got all these strange lead links, and you don't want to do that. So I just wanted to point that out, but you did a great job other than that, and it probably works fine, and you'll be okay for that. But um, as we see here, you want to be able to go into the uh, – Whatever we're, whatever we're doing with it, uh, you want to make those as short as possible. And the components, like so, wrap it around, solder it so both of them are at the same temperature. That's very important. And, and that way you won't have any problems with uh, loose connections and so on. And when you get done, you want to jiggle that around and make sure it's good. And, you, of course – you know you're going to go back and really make things happen. Well, tonight, we're going to show you a couple of things. Now, don't get ahead on this deal, but I have some wonderful drawings. We are working on the power supply. We are working on the power supply, and I want you to know that we have had some great help from Gene. Gene is something else. Look at this program he's done for us. And all of the parts are listed. I'll leave that up there. These are the parts that you will need for the power supply. And we're going to take this step at a time. And uh, this is the first one. Now, we've covered it a couple of times, but I want to make sure because if you're uh, up in a, an alert, those resistors have changed. Why did they change? I told you a couple weeks ago when we built this, those would probably change. Why? Because we didn't know what the load was going to be when we put it all together. Well, 
in a minute, you'll see why I know that. Because <laughs> I have it all built in, I know. So we're going to change those two dropping resistors to 1K. I'm using, I think, one or two watts. And uh, look at this. I, Gene, you're something else. Uh, this is really pretty stuff. And uh, did you get it all? Yeah. Looking back at my monitor here. And there you go. It takes screenshots of this, and this is for you guys and gals. We're going to have this up. I'll put it up. I'll know next week where we're going with it and what we're going to do. Uh, worst case, I'll stick it on a, a page in, Ham, uh, in uh, Heil Sound, but I'm, I'm hoping we'll get our own if we can get it going. Anyway, while I'm badgering on here, there you go, and that's how it's set up. And this is the power supply, and that's all we want to talk about right now. I want you all to really – Concentrate and get that power supply going because here's what's coming next. Over the week, I built the whole shebang, all of it, and I am waiting for my crystals from, uh, from Bree. Um, there we go there. So we should have all of this ready to go next week. Uh, as far as the transmitter, but we're not going to talk about that. We're only talking about the power supply. Now, of interest, I want you to notice something. This is the old man in me. <laughs> you guys are probably going to use bread ties or wire clips. Uh-uh. Nope, nope, nope. I didn't do that. <laughs> I used waxed string you, this is what we did in the old days and you can still get it it's a wax string and i laced all the cabling between all of it and uh, i'm going to give you a short little video or shot here of, of the whole works but again don't get ahead we want to take this a step at a time next week we will uh, cover the preamp and uh, at the end here, I'm going to be able to even turn it on and let you hear it perhaps. But anyway, uh, everything is working fine. We're very excited, very happy. Uh, I get that crystal going. We'll really be able to go. But I want you to center on that. The next thing we're going to do will be the preamp. And the preamp, is uh, it, it, it really works great. Um, let me see here. Where are we at? Okay. Um, let me turn this on and plug this in. And what we're going to do, I'm just teasing you here, I know. <laughs> I'm going to let you hear the preamp. And I, I have to tell you, I was blown away. I didn't think it would be this good. You do stuff like this, and you're like, uh, is it going to hum? Is it going to do this or that? No, it didn't. And I was amazed. So what we're going to do, we're going to take, and I did this a little differently maybe than most in that. You, might, you don't really have to have these jacks. However, I have plans down the line. I have plans that we are, we're going to use this preamp for a lot of other things. We got all kinds of ideas for that. But here we go. And we're going to do that. Now remember, keep in mind, we're dealing with some, uh, yes, high voltage. <laughs> so watch where you put your fingers. <laughs> and, uh, we're going to plug this in, and <laughs> this has got all my uh, my my buddies on 75. Uh, I'm using a chicken head knob. How many people? That would be a well. You already see it. It's it, it's called a chicken head. Back in the 50s, we had a lot of gear, and they used chicken head knobs. That's one of them, and I got one, and it's red. But there you go. Let me uh, crank up. Level a little bit, and we should be able to hear something going over there. There we go. Um, that's uh, coming through the preamp, just to prove to you. There we go. 
and it works really good and it sounds great. I'm really, really impressed. And um, I, I honestly, I have to tell you, I didn't think it would be that good. I, I uh, finished that preamp uh, back at the plant last week. You know, we spent a week there. And my guys uh, working in our plant, they were blown away. Now, you're talking about guys that are, uh, they've never seen a tube, really. <laughs> and so we had a lot of fun because they just went crazy. And like me, they were impressed to how good it sounded. So um, I didn't say it was going to sound terrible, but uh, I didn't think it would be this high quality. It's really good. But pay attention to the... Uh, to the uh, lacing, that was cool. Um, and again, we want to center on those parts. I'll show them one more time. Uh, these are the parts that you want to go find. If you don't have it and you don't have your power supply finished yet, please do. Because that's what we want to settle on. Take a screenshot of that. Pick up your iPhone and take a picture of it. And... Uh, I'll post this somewhere. Uh, Dan might have it in the show notes, too, come think of it. So uh, that's what's, uh, what's going to happen there. And keep in mind, this is where you buy the parts. They're all available. And I've had a lot of my friends say, oh, you can get the parts. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, you can. Uh, Radio Days, Antique Electronic Supply, big round of them all. Uh, I, I got the tubes from vacuum tubes. I, I like dealing with him. And the crystals, AF4K. Got all the crystals you need. My crystals will be here tomorrow when you know. But it, we're not going to get into that till we get it all ready to go. Uh, but I wanted to show you how it's going to all be working. There it is right there. That's the whole project. And that uh, this morning, uh, my friend that gave me the, uh, the whole... I guess the inspiration for this, W0BVT, he had it on the air yesterday running a watt, watt and a half. He's 200 miles from me or so. But uh, notice we got uh, we got cathode current and we're rocking and rolling. We'll take this and plug her into air and we could have audio. But I don't have a crystal. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I didn't show you this part. We got to have this part over here. This is where you will tune and load and we'll have to learn about that. But that's way down the line. This ain't going to happen in a week because we have a lot to do to build this preamp. I know I'm making you all dizzy, but I want you to see how it goes. It's the only way I know to do it. And uh, so that that's where we are. And uh, let's see. In closing, in closing, if you've never seen or knew about how to lace a cable – it's, my God, it's been done for years, uh, decades and decades and decades. Here is my 1957 original call book, and it's, all of this is in the new ones too, but there's a whole page on the right way and the wrong way. Wait a minute, get over to the right page, Kyle. There's a right and a wrong way to do that cable. If you want to really do a, a vintage build, there you are. I've even done in, in years past with thin wire, like a number 26 gauge uh, wire with, you know, a rubber jacket on it. I've uh, laced cable with that. So there you go. Talk about fun. Mm. It's great fun. Sorry to uh, not be able to give you all of it at one time, but I can't. I don't want to. I want, I want you to do this in sections, and we're going to have fun once we get on down the line with it. But uh, we'll talk more next week. about. I got some really good diaphragms that Gene did on the uh, preamp. Gene, thank you so much. He already went and built all it. I'll, I'll show you pictures next week. He makes this look like Tinker Toy. Beautiful, beautiful job he did. And I'm just throwing it together. And there again, I don't have a lot of time to do, but uh, we'll make it happen. So um, we'll see you next week.